February 8th of 1969 in an old secluded cemetery in the town of Truro on Cape Cod. Local authorities discovered the body of a young woman. The sequence of events that followed introduced the world to Anthony Costa, the Cape Cod vampire. Anthony Costa buried some of his victims in Pine Grove Cemetery. Pine Grove Cemetery is the second oldest cemetery in Truro, Massachusetts. The cemetery was established in 1799. It is located on Cemetery Road in a remote area of the Cape Cod National Seashore. Access to the cemetery is by way of a gravel roadway. The roadway is approximately a half mile long. Born in 1945, Costa was an infant when his father died in World War II. Around the age of seven, Costa told his mother a man was entering his room by night, and he identified a photo of his father as the silent prowler. In November 1961, at age 16, he invaded a Somerville, Massachusetts apartment bending over the bed of a teenage girl before she woke and her screams drove him off. Three days later, he returned and tried to drag the girl down the stairs of her apartment house, but the neighbors intervened. Convicted of burglary and assault on January 4th, 1962, he drew a one-year suspended sentence. With three years probation, Costa was married in April of 1963, fathering three children before drugs complicated the relationship producing bizarre and irresponsible behavior. In June 1966, he brought home two girls, Bonnie Williams and Diane Federoff, with the announcement that he would be driving them to Pennsylvania and moving on alone from there to California. Later, Costa told police he drove the girls to Hayward, California, but they never got there. Costa surfaced at his home in Massachusetts 10 days later. The girls are now believed to be his first known victims. In August 1967, hiking in the Truro Woods near Provincetown, Costa shot a female acquaintance with a bow and arrow, afterward apologizing for the accident. Early in 1968, his marriage was in shambles. He drove to California in the latter days of January, briefly settling in San Francisco's free-swinging Haight-Ashbury district. Girlfriend Barbara Spaulding left her child with relatives and vanished on the day Costa left for Massachusetts. She was never seen again. While driving down the gravel road, you can understand why Costa chose this area to bury his victims. It is pristine but quite isolated. Costa was suspected of killing eight women. He was convicted of only four murders. Susan Perry and Cindy Monzon both lived in nearby Provincetown on Cape Cod. Mary Ann Wysocki and Patricia Walsh were both from Providence, Rhode Island. On February 8, 1969, while looking for the bodies of Patricia Walsh and Mary Ann Wysocki, police discovered Susan Perry. Perry had been missing since the previous Labor Day. Perry's body had been dismembered into eight pieces. When Waisaki's body was found about a month later, her torso and head had been buried separately. Not long after, Walsh and the rest of Waisaki's body were found in a forest clearing that Costa had used for marijuana growing. This garden of marijuana plants in the greater case inspired the true crime book In His Garden by Leo Damore. 18-year-old Cindy Monzon vanished from her home in Provincetown. Her disappearance was reported to police on June 14th. By August, Costa was divorced. His brand new live-in lover, Susan Perry, lasted for a week before she disappeared, September 10th. When questioned, Costa told his friends that she had gone to Mexico. On January 24th, 1969, Patricia Walsh and Mary Ann Wysocki had disappeared on a visit to Provincetown. Two weeks later, researchers found the body of Susan Perry at the Old Toro Cemetery, about a mile and a half from Pine Grove Cemetery. On March 4th, the dismembered bodies of Walsh, Wysocki, and Manzan were found buried together at the Pine Grove Cemetery. 
Investigators learned that Walsh and Waisaki had met Costa in Provincetown. Found in possession of their car, Costa produced a suspicious bill of sale claiming he had purchased the vehicle from the women who had left for Canada. Costa was arrested on suspicion of murder after detectives learned that the burial site was Costa's private garden, used for stashing drugs and growing marijuana. In custody, the suspect changed his story several times, twice implicating his innocent friends in the murders, repeatedly failing polygraph tests. By reading several books on these murders and reading numerous newspaper accounts of the era during these murders, suggests that the bodies were buried in the northeast section of the Pine Grove Cemetery. This trail is the northeast section of that cemetery. There is no way to really find out where the bodies were buried but it is somewhere in this section. The case gained international attention when District Attorney Edmund Dennis in comments to the media claimed that each body was cut into as many parts as there are joints. These claims upon examination are patently false but caused an international sensation for this local quiet area on Turo, Cape Cod. Anthony Costa, in his first psychiatric exam, it resulted in a diagnosis of a schizoid personality. Three months later, a second psychiatrist characterized Costa as a modern-day Marquis de Sade and a sexually dangerous man capable of murder. On July 12, 1969, Costa finally confessed to the murder of Marianne Wysocki. Costa's trial opened May 6, 1970, ending with his conviction on four counts of murder. On May 12, 1974, Costa was found hanging in his cell, a leather belt around his neck. The death was a suicide. Local folklore has stated that this abandoned earthen mausoleum was the place where Anthony Costa performed his gruesome murders and dissections. Any avid reader of this case would quickly find out that this is not the case. To suggest that this was a place where these gruesome murders occurred actually dishonors the memories of the victims. Pine Grove Cemetery is a quiet, peaceful place. The sounds of nature pays homage to all those that are buried there.